Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Pineapple Podcast. Today, I have my good friend here, James Rocundo, and we're actually going to talk about, you know, the journey of being an immigrant to landing success by investing into multifamily building. James, you want to say a quick hello and introduction to yourself? Thank you, Mitch. Uh, thank you for having me on this amazing podcast. Uh, my name is James Rocundo. Super excited to be on your podcast. Wonderful. So for our viewers as well, just so you know, James actually immigrated from Uganda in Africa, and he's had his dream to come here, not only to make a better life for him and his family, but to really soar and explore and to become his best that he can be. And he's got an interesting story for sure, because, you know, James actually got into the real estate space from not knowing what am I doing to today he's landed a 10 unit apartment building that he's working on. And his journey has been quite interesting. James, tell us about, tell us about that shift, like leaving one country to come to the next country with a family. That's a big step, right? Because there's so much unknown, right? The only thing that keeps you going is the belief. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. So yeah, this was, uh, this was a, a great opportunity when I, when I got, that got presented to me. I remember back home, uh, we had the opportunity to, 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 to come to Canada. And uh, once I came here, it just opened up my mindset that this is going to be the greatest opportunity that I've ever gotten. And I like to resonate that with some, uh, some people that I work with and all that, you know, we have, we, have, we get to talk about, you know, I wish I could win the lottery. My life will be set. I wish I could do this. But honestly, my biggest opportunity was just coming to a country like Canada that has provided abundant mindset, belief, and opportunities that anything that you want, you can put your mind to it and, and achieve. So that was my biggest opportunity in life that I believe. Uh, but yes, coming to Canada, I believe this was, uh, was an amazing opportunity. I quickly entered uh, the system where you know, I went to high school here and uh, I adjusted uh, with the systems in place. And, uh, you know, I uh, found, uh, found an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to find more about real estate investing. And that's when I really discovered uh, that, you know, uh, real estate investing was something that, uh, that was passionate to me. Nice. And, and let's explore that a little bit, because as you know, we're all in this space and a lot of us, we absolutely love real estate investing, right? And I, if I recall in the earlier days when you had now started your journey, you were a little bit uncertain that what are the strategies available to begin with and how do I get there, right? Yes. Uh, but I think you, you, you showed some, some determination and persistence in figuring out what is the right strategy for you. And then when you found that, you, you started to run, you know what I mean? So That's give so us a sense of the, the true the true struggles. A lot of people focus on, on the end game, like they have the success and now they want to talk about that. But in reality, many of the uh, people who come into the space, they don't know where to start and they don't know what success looks like, right? So, so yeah. give us a sense of your struggles in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I remember when I realized that we wanted to enter into this real estate space, I've always had something for real estate. You know, we, 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 we stumbled upon an opportunity, uh, which was more passive side of things, because we realized we want to do something in real estate. So we tapped into uh, pre-construction condos. So these were more of a passive, uh, passive way of entering into the real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a, a, it had a nice staggered way of having a, a five percent uh, down payment at least every year. So that kind of provided um, a forced saving plan per se. And then uh, this was something my wife and I really, really enjoyed. Right. But, you know, due to the active nature of our lives, my wife and I are pretty active. We just realized, you know, once we had this pre-construction condo going, you know, the next couple of months were like, well, we're real estate investors, but we're not really doing anything. We, we feel we could do a little bit more. We wanted to. So we had that search, that bit of an itch to find out what else is out there. Right. So um, we we uh, did a bit of toggling here and there on the Internet and space trying to discover. And we stumbled upon uh, we stumbled upon uh, uh, a three day workshop that Keyspire has. And we figured this is something that we want to get into. So nice. <laughs> after realizing what these we were talking about in this three day workshop with Keyspire, you know, they talked about the different strategies from, I mean, uh, uh, private lending to short term rentals to uh, long term buy and holds. Uh, to land, you know, there was a whole bunch. And I said, yes, this makes sense. And it just, a, a light bulb moment came on, you know, Major? Yeah. It, it just opened up a whole new world. And we're like, 
you know what, we got to take this leap of faith. You know, we got to know what's out there. Maybe this is the answer we've been looking for. Keeping in mind, we got to balance, you know, we got this 5% that's going to be coming up and we got to go into this unknown space. But, you know, we, we took that leap of faith, my wife and I, and we entered the Keyspire, uh, Keyspire group, which, uh, which, which provided so much knowledge to what, what else is out there. Because if you don't know, you just, you, you just stay where you are in this, in this comfortable uh, position. So, uh, you know, we did that for about a year and coming out of that was just like, now we know exactly what we want to do. And then, you know, we kind of tapped into the strategies that my, uh, that my wife and I live, which is the multifamily real estate investing, right? So I, and I, I just want to, I want to interrupt here because you said a few very important things here. One is you expose yourself within, within the Keyspire network, of course, the three day introduction uh, workshop, and that really open up your mind so again you're going on the fact that you're looking for people and you're attracting things in your life that really is going to help get you to the next step or the next place but you don't even know what that looks like all you know is that there is better for me and, and the first thing obviously is belief you know yes. as um, Jack Canfield always says E plus R equals O the event uh, plus your response to it creates the opportunity or, or, or leads to the opportunity, right? So exactly. sometimes you go to these things and you say, oh my God, what a crappy thing to talk about. I don't believe it. And you leave. So your response was negative, left you open, left you going back to the day job, the nine to five, and that's the world. Flip yeah. side, your response was, oh my God, where was all this information 10 years ago in my life, right? Exactly. And then you embraced it. And then today, you know, maybe 18 months later, you and I are chatting on, on the Pineapple uh, podcast, and we're talking about a success story that's just unbelievable. These are the things that people want. And the, the reason why I, I really look forward to you coming on the, on the show, coming on, on the episode, it was because you're a perfect example of just embracing everything you can learn and following the right people and just know that better will come, you know? Absolutely. So, so, I mean, I, I can't wait to jump into what the, the success story looks like. And I'm sure our viewers want to know about that as well. But I really just felt like, you know, share the journey. Because remember, you created a website. You didn't know what on earth the website should be like, but you know you were going to do it. And when I, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, my God, you guys did a great job, right? So, so, you know, these are the fundamentals, right? Creating a little marketing plan because you... You, again, you didn't know what that would be like, but you embraced it. And what I loved was you embraced everything that made sense, everything that seemed to be good advice, right? And when it wasn't good advice, you just ignored it. Uh, and also, I mean, you're super a uh, super positive guy. I love that, that attitude for sure, you know? But again, share with us what the marketing and the, the website, what did you feel? Did you feel you were accomplishing things or you felt like you were doing things for the sake of doing it. What was your mindset around it? Yeah, so I remember just even before, you know, as, 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 as understanding a business, you always want to try to be in a position that you want to be knowledgeable and, and the person that's supposed to be the expert in that industry. But prior to that, Mitch, I must have told you, I, 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 I was hungry, Mitch. I was hungry for what's out there. I was hungry for, I knew there was something that could be, that could just be, provide that food for the soul because there was so much that's out there that I didn't know about there was so much uh, success stories that you see that 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 you like this is unachievable right but I just knew that you know taking that leap of faith that 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 next step you know you might not know what it is I honestly did not know what that was I had no I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel I just saw a tunnel Mitch and I just went for it right so again I came into this space where I said I don't know what it is but I'm I, I know there's got to be an answer somewhere right so uh the the hunger the drive the you know the fire burning it within me was just kept on pushing and, and that led me to uh to the networks that i that i that i mentioned earlier that led me to finding out and discovering the people and it just kept on getting it just kept on making more sense every day i dig more just made more sense and made more sense and made more sense and uh you know sure enough i was able to find some of the answers that i was looking for and i was able to see what I, kind of search and find the answers that i was looking for Beautiful. I mean, that's exactly what it's about. And I mean, you know, you can share with your views as well. When we talk about, you know, pushing yourselves and, and doing things outside your comfort zone, and we talk about the, 
the marketing and the website, you also made the travel. And this was during, you know, uh, unprecedented COVID times as well, when you were allowed to travel. Um, I believe I saw you at Mississauga meetups, um, Ottawa meetups. You you showed up, right? So give us give people a sense of the travel because that's a commitment. You got to take time off from work. You got to book your tickets. You got to get hotels. You know, uh, yes. just to show up, just to say hello. You know, just the network. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember it was just those times when I think uh, uh, you know the the laws were put in place where now you could attend about you know ten more a certain number of people can attend. And I remember in some of the groups that I was saying, you know, just you want to learn, you got to be at the right table. The, you know, you got to be in the same table with the people. You got to be in the same groups and the networks. And I said, and I committed myself that if there's any meetup that is within Ontario, I'm going for it. I must have drove about all of, I, I came out to Toronto. I'm based in Ottawa, by the way. Um, I came out to Toronto, the meetups. I went out to the London Niagara meetups. I went out to the Montreal meetups. I was just making myself available because I really wanted to network and search. I wanted, I wanted answers. I was looking for answers that I knew I would find somewhere, somehow through these networking groups, uh, through these, uh, uh, these meetups, uh, through the connections. And this is how I was able to uh, discover a lot of people in the same industry, tap into their mindset, just knowing. And I was just, in that whole time, I was just a sponge. I was just absorbing and absorbing and absorbing. And that's how I was, uh, I was able to just discover a lot of people in the same space. No, that's amazing. That is truly an amazing story. So, the, and you still have your day job, right? You haven't shifted over yet. I, I still did have my day job. Uh, things have changed since then. And I can, I can share that later on. Okay, you. cool, cool. Well, it's all about growing, right? So, and, and as Tony Robbins says, life, life happens for you, not to you. So That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's brilliant. That is exactly the attitude you need to, to drive success, right? Because you got to be known. You got to share, share, share the tables. You know, you got to, be in this right spaces with people all the time, right? Because that's how opportunities are made. They're not made by you wondering what to do at home. You gotta be taking action, even if it's an imperfect action, right? You gotta take the imperfect action. So, I mean, that's a, that's a brilliant strategy altogether to uh, sort of um, get us there. So let's yeah. get into the, exciting, into the exciting world now where you actually found an opportunity and it's like, okay, you, you went from zero to 200 <clears throat> in a few minutes, right? And the question would be, well, let's start to explore that. So the opportunity showed up. I'm just gonna sip some water. For a 10 unit apartment building. Now, most people start their journey with five doors, three doors, you know, sort of multifamily, but you, you, you sort of had that fire and that passion in you. The 10 doors showed up. So walk us through what happened when, when that opportunity showed up, you know, um, what were the numbers like? What did you, what did you think you had to do to make it a reality? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is the fun stuff that I love too. So um, just coming off, uh, just, uh, just a bit of a, a follow up on that is once I, once I, you know, I, I realized what we wanted because uh, in, in, in the key spire, you know, it was just teaching me what I wanted to do. But um, once I, I finished that, that transition and I, we realized that multifamily was the space that we wanted to be because, you know, we, we picked multifamily because obviously this was something that was going to be able to, this was something that was able to get us closer to our goals that we had set up. And uh, the overall, we just felt multifamily was the way we wanted to do. So um, I, I, an opportunity of a 10 unit uh, came up and, um, you know, we looked at it and obviously one of the first things that you look at is like, man, this is a, a little bit too much for me, right? This is something that I don't think I can be able to take down because that mindset, right? The mindset of, of, of this is a little bit scary was something I had to quickly uh, quickly overlap and just learn. Um, and, and how I did that just to kind of mirror off a little bit was uh, was I found a mentor, right? Because I had all the coaching in uh, in, uh, in in Keyspire, which actually I'm, I'm, I'm happy about because uh, I was able to get a coach that I can resonate with and also is the uh, host of an award-winning podcast called the Pineapple Podcast. So I'm truly blessed and honored. Truly blessed and honored with that. So um, my coach was able to provide me with uh, with uh, helping me to achieve my goals, and one of those goals was 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 able to find a multifamily. But then I partnered. Uh, I found a mentor, you know, and this is somebody uh, you probably already know, Alfonso Quadra. Uh, he was able to be a person who was able to. He mentored me. Uh, he is actually still mentoring me, but he's able to share uh, his experience and his knowledge ongoing. So 
just that mentorship alone was 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 a was a, a game changer for me because that really gave me a whole different mindset in regards to you know what you could you could take the next step you know you could level up so you know I came out of this space coming into let me get for a duplex or a triplex or maybe a fourplex at the most because I I, I have this I don't know much more than a fourplex. But with the ongoing mindset that I have with my mentor, you know, we leveled up and an opportunity came for 10 years, uh, which is sitting on uh, approximately two acres. Now, you know, you don't typically come out and start and saying, I'm going to look for this and I'm going to look for that. But this opportunity came. Um, I, I was able to, 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 to look at this property and we submitted the offer. And, and lo and behold, you know, it, the numbers made sense. But they, there was a possibility of them making more sense because of the opportunity that this whole deal was able to, going to be able to provide. So we made the offer, we got the property under contract, and this was actually in the times of uh, the craziness of the COVID times. So uh, you could you could best believe we we made things happen at that end of things. So uh, the ten year came up, we're able to close on this property, and lo and behold, uh, we we actually uh, we actually closed on the property. So that was exciting. Um, and moving forward with that, so once we realized uh, the ten unit, uh, the ten unit closed, you know there was a, there was another opportunity to build on it. Now, things are just picking up so fast at this point in time because you got to realize the space, the mindset I'm coming from is I'm just looking for duplex or triplex, and here you are, you 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 know you're now targeting a ten unit with the possibility of land development. I must right, so tell you. Let, let's stay. Let's stay on the on the on the. Uh... 10 units for now, and then we'll we'll get into the the, the other the land development because I sure. think it's two very distinct opportunities at the same time, right? Right. So on the on the 10 unit, what was the the the, the, the if, if are you okay to share what was the purchase price on the 10 unit? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. So what was the price? So the price of that one was about 1.5 million. Yeah, it was actually 1.5 million. Brilliant. So that's a, that is an amazing price for me. For for the market because your 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 property is in Ontario still correct correct yes okay so that's brilliant one point five so one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a door um what was the condition of the building was it a was it in good condition was it you needed value adding opportunities what was the condition of the building yeah great so this was a ten unit that um half of the half of the half of the units in the in the in the property were uh were at, were stabilized so the other half needed that value add where we're gonna you know do the burr where we're gonna add that forced appreciation to the property beautiful so yes. then when you look at the property so now what you're in for 1.5 yes. 10 apartments you have the opportunity to develop five further apartments the beautiful thing with 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 multifamily five plus doors is it's a numbers game. It's quite easy to, to, to figure out what, what your end game would be, right? Yes. So now what was the on complete or after the renovations are done, what would be the value of the property then? Yeah, so when we looked at the numbers on this one here, we realized that if we were able to at least turn, even if we don't turn all five, but able to turn at least two, we were going to be able to increase the property uh, value by about $200,000 per unit if we did the renovation. So that gave us a nice aspect of where things might look once we end. So we had an after appraisal, uh, after appraisal, um, uh, we had an after repair value uh, of approximately $2 million if we turned over at least two or three, three units. But one of the beauty about this deal here is uh, we actually bought it undervalued because as soon as we got the appraisal, when we took that to our lenders, the appraisal came in 300,000 over, over, over what we paid for. So we had equity right off the buy. Oh my God. So that's amazing. So you made $300,000 on the buy and then you could take it up to another, basically take it up to about $500,000 on complete. Correct. So, so just on that alone, I mean, this is what the power of belief and taking action, obviously, is about. Because now you've gotten this property and you're basically going to benchmark half a million dollars within your first 12 months, if not sooner, on it. That's a big success story, right? And, and, and hats off to you because those deals are not easy to come by. And when you do get them, uh, you can't be nervous about it. You've got to take the action. So that's great. So now you have a really great opportunity where you've come into the space. And guys, I want you to understand what James is giving us here is the secrets to buying a 10 unit apartment building. Now on top of that, what do we have? We, we have a bigger opportunity now, because like you say, you, you, the property came with two acres of land. 
So the next question, I guess you asked yourself as well, what do we do with the land, right? Exactly. And what, what did you do? What was the answer? Like, give us a little idea of the process. Who did you talk to about the land? What was the intent behind the conversation? You know, was it a sort of if you're discovering what are the other opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so again, we realized this land and we have to realize what are we going to do with this land? I went back to my basics and I said, you know what? To find the answers, you got to go dig and search. So we, I, that was another journey that I had uh, with the help of my mentor. We look for the people who actually specialize in the land. We look for the experts in this space and we're able to realize that, you know what, you have something here. This is something that you could do. It was zoned right already. Uh, so now this is some of the some of the, the language that I learned into the land development space. Uh, it was already zoned for what we could add on to the, uh, more multifamily properties in there. So we quickly learned, I quickly learned that uh, the experts in the land development space uh, looked at some of the ideas that I had just this is Joel vision and they were able to kind of put it through into a real perspective that this is what you could actually do on this land and Mitch this was just mind-boggling I had no idea what you could be able to do with that I had no idea the different plays or platforms that you can do this land development space so again I went back to my basics and I searched and the experts told me what was able to what was possible to do on this land mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so, so now we need the reveal. So what, what did the, ex now when you say experts, are we talking about the urban planners or are you talking about the city um, planning no. department? Yeah, so no, when I mean the experts, I'm meaning the guys who actually are known for land development. These are real estate investors in the same space as I am, but this is more of their niche. This is more of what they do. So I could not go to an urban planner because again, he's gonna ask me questions that I don't know. So I need an expert that I could probably ever, I can be able to leverage and leverage their knowledge. And now these are the ones that would be able to tell you this is the best strategy uh, to, to use, uh, to go with, 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 uh, with what you have here. So uh, once I found out, uh, you know, the people that, into this space, they were the ones that were able to take this uh, these plans here and go now to the to the municipality and 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 tell them this is what we want to do. So, uh, long behold, uh, what we found out is uh, on these two acres, we were able to uh, we're able to put another thirty three uh, more multifamily units on this land. Oh my God! So your your ten units is now going to afford you to get to thirty three units. So forty three doors over the next couple of years. Of course, you know. It's a, it's a process, but think about the impact on that, my friend. You, you've gone, you've done the exploration, and now it turns out that instead of even them telling you, well, build another 10-unit apartment building, they gave you permission, or they're going to give you permission to build 33 units, brand new build. Absolutely. And this is a city encouraging us to do it. That is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And again, to our viewers, you know, this is what embracing the unknown is all about, right? It's like, you got to have faith and believe that you're going to do the right things. You're going to attract the right things in life. Because again, you know, James targeted the, the first opportunity was the 10 unit apartment building. That was a success story to begin with that he would be incredibly happy with. And James, now you discover that you, you've got in the back pocket 33 doors that you can further develop. How did you feel, my friend? What was the feeling between you and your family when you discovered that news? Man, the feeling is just, it's, it's like you've been told that you just won. You've been, it, the feeling was, was I, I can't even express it because the experience that you just, you just feel once, you know, you, you have been told that you know you got something here and you realize and you dig more about it it was such an overwhelming experience it was such a happy moment to and i could share not only with me but my investors because my investors as well they didn't know this information but once they realized this is we're actually getting a lot more than we thought overall it was just a win-win-win for everybody on, on in this case so it was such a tremendous feeling for sure absolutely i mean it, it's probably nervous and exciting at the same time because now you got to go uh, raise more capital. <laughs> I have no choice but to enter the land development space. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That, that is brilliant, you know. And, and again, just from a, a perspective of structure, just so people are aware, like these types of deal, it's not a one-man show. You actually have a group of people that you work with, correct? 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I have, I have, I have. Uh, like in real estate, when you learn, you quickly realize you got to build a team. So my team has has just been supportive from day one and up to now, still going ongoing. So the team is but one of the most important things to have uh, as a real estate investor. Just, just to you know, to leverage and to to just to lean back onto the expertise because it's not a one man show. That's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. But then again, you know, really happy that the, that you're sharing with us your journey because. There's more opportunities. Obviously, 33 doors uh, to get that construction going might take a little time. But the, at the end of it, though, again, there's so much opportunities out of that. And for new construction apartment buildings, it's huge, right? Because now you're building energy efficient apartments, you're building them modern, you're building them clean. You get to put your input and your ideas of what you think is the perfect home uh, for, for future uh, renters, right? Exactly. And, uh, you know, now with all the new plans coming out from CMHC, we can able to be able to build according to some of the criteria that they're looking for. So it's just a bit of a, a new space that we could see that we could explore just to make sure that, you know, we make it a, a, a profitable um, uh, adventure going forward. So we just is something at least you have some kind of say into it as opposed to uh, coming in and kind of working on the back end. You kind of have this on a, you're kind of starting off with a blank slate where you could just, you know, build a building according to your, to, to your targets at the end. Mm -hmm. And you said, you said something quite important, and a lot of people don't know about this, uh, but CMHC, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you can share, uh, you know, a little bit in terms of what does CMHC do or, or incentivize for landlords, because CMHC government, it's the Canadian Mortgage Housing Authority, um, they want to basically encourage great home ownership, so they don't want crappy looking apartments, right? And they would put programs in place that actually helps landlords like yourself to develop, further develop and put good quality homes for people, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so, so maybe talk a two, two couple of minutes on that so people can get a sense of well, what is James talking about when he says CMHC, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, great. So yeah, so CMHC, like, like you said, is the Canadian Housing uh, uh, um, Canadian Mortgage Housing Corporation. Uh, so what essentially what they've put in place is some of the programs and they keep changing every few years, but the program that, that we're kind of targeting is a program where essentially it's going to give you the ability to have less money down and have a bigger amortization. So this is the overall length of your mortgage. So if you could qualify for some of the aspects that the quality is sort of that they're putting out for in regards to a more efficient property, uh, you could kind of meet some kind of you're providing some kind of housing for the community. They'll incentivize and make it a lot more easier for you to have a long amortization and in in return you know that long amortization is going to actually give you that more cash flow so you're looking at some terms where they're giving you up to 95 percent loan to value now essentially when you talk to your investors and you realize that you could provide 95 percent loan to value this is unheard of in the in the other kinds of space so coming with five percent down to a project and you're looking at some some amazing massive cash flows at the end of the term is super attractive so this i think would be attractive to a lot of investors that wanting to looking for some you know some greater returns on their investment so you know those are the, some of the criteria that we kind of we work backwards from what cmhc you know kind of gives us a target point so we just kind of work backwards to see that we can meet those goals and overall just you know be able to provide uh, provide the value for, for not only us but for the investors who are looking for some amazing returns and just the goals honestly it's not even about the returns but just provide to be able to provide uh, returns and goals for what what the investors are looking for is, is what we, we like at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, you know, uh, we're trying to make make sure that you know people are happy, the goals, and you know, just to achieve that that lifestyle freedom that we want to give them. And and, uh, and 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 it's a good feeling when you do that for for somebody. Absolutely. And again, you know, just just so you know as well uh, for the viewers as well. Uh, what James is talking about, typically in a in a in a resi in a multifamily five plus doors, they consider it a commercial mortgage. You're typically looking at 25 to 35 percent down payment. Now the government is saying we'll actually help you guys develop by providing a 95 or an 85 percent loan to value, meaning that your down payment now goes to five percent or 15 percent, and it's spread over maybe 40 or 50 years uh, amortizations. So in a case like that, you can really, uh, if you love the, the, the multifamily space and that's your thing and you want to get into this, the government in this case is actually going to help you grow and develop because now your money can stretch into doing more and more things because 
as James rightly says, maybe we do develop the, the 33 units. You're going to do it with 5% down. So the rest of the money you have can go towards construction, right? And so now you're really putting capital to work versus capital sitting in an equity position that does nothing really for you, helps the helps the banking system because now they have your 25% that they go and invest. Uh, but you know, essentially it's really working on a capitalization side where all the dollars are pretty much at work. Uh, you definitely still have some skin in the game, but with deals like that, nobody's coming out, right? Because they're very hard to come by. Um, it's not it's not that it's just there waiting for you. You got to qualify for it. You got to make sure you're building the right buildings, that you're not slumlording, but in fact, you're giving good quality uh, homes and you're really uh, demonstrating that you're a good landlord, right? Those are the secrets that, that pulls it out. But that's, you know, that's kind of like the phase two. I think right now the focus is, you know, or the secrets that we're getting today is, well, how, how do I buy my first multifamily building, right? And 10 unit is an amazing uh, number of units to buy. And that's what, uh, that's what you're sharing with us today, James. Yeah. Uh, so we're really happy to have you here and we're really happy to share uh, for sure, you know? Absolutely. So, so what, what's on the horizon? I guess the next phase is getting into your phase two to see what is realizable because you're still going to be focusing on developing your five, the five underperforming uh, apartments, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So we, we strategize this whole project in a way that, you know, our first things first is to stabilize the actual asset that we have. So we want to make sure that we maximize and stabilize the 10 unit that we have. We make sure that it's running at full potential. And then, and coincidentally, we can also start working with the municipality to see how we can get all these plans approved, making sure that we have everything is kind of like in, uh, in order so as to be able to get, you know, all the approvals and everything with the city. So, but at the moment, we're just kind of stabilizing this asset and making sure that everything runs smoothly and then cohesively. The other, the other, the land, the land development is going is going forward as well. So uh, that's what we're working right now. Uh, but again, you know, you never stop growing. You know, I I uh, I, I learned a great saying from my mentor is uh, once you once you start once you start learning, you 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 start growing and you can't stop growing because once you start growing, now you get to plateau where you're getting comfortable, and that's a very dangerous space to be in when you're staying comfortable and you know and you're not you know getting getting to anything that excites you right because uh uh you know i had to quickly learn that um uh, you gotta learn to be able to get comfortable being uncomfortable right and that was That's my it. push from the beginning that was my push that was right from the beginning that go up there you don't know anybody at these meetups you know what that's fine i'll say hello and that's as best as i could do i'll say hello and i'm sure they'll say hello back that's a win, right? So getting all this this in this space of you know not being uh, not not being not being uh, uncomfortable is what pushes me, and I'm I'm, I'm still growing. Uh, we're working on some multifamily deals as we speak right now. We're getting a few under contract. So this is that evolving step that I'm always having. That I'm always growing. I'm always learning, and that's and that's really has been key to all this. That's amazing. You know, we really really appreciate you giving us so much of your insights and your experiences because for me it's really about people realizing that you know it's not always about the big guys the billionaires the the, the cardones of the world that's just killing it everyday folks can make exceptional ways for themselves and their family you just got to believe you got to network don't be afraid to invest in yourself because what james is talking about is about he invested not only his time he invested his capital his money into different programs that learned that he learned from and, and and that's something that's really important find the people and the, the communities around you obviously you'll want to vet make sure you're you're satisfied with where, where you're putting your money but don't be afraid to invest in yourself it pays back like tenfold, right and it connects you with people who become your friends and it's lifelong and you, you just get energy around that right so so again james you know appreciate you being here and appreciate you um sharing so much insights with us. I will put your, um, your email and your, your, your contact information in the comments uh, one, once the video is released. And, um, and then again, people can, can connect with you. So any, any sort of last words or last tips you have for our viewers? 
Yeah, I mean, Mitch, it's been a, it's been an honor, a pleasure to be on this on this on this world renowned podcast. I appreciate it. Um, you know, one thing I want I could leave with uh, somebody that would that can maybe resonate with my story is, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, investing in yourself is really really important. But sometimes in life, you might not be able to have the capacity to invest in yourself. You might not have what it takes or the amount of to join all these programs because we know they're not they, they cannot be the cheapest. But one thing you can really do is network. Just just reach out to people who are in the same space a lot of people have this abundant mindset this great mindset of sharing of giving back and this is how you could quickly tap into uh, a network group of knowing who it is just reach out to somebody you could resonate with reach out to these groups reach out to you'll quickly learn the space and that's how you build a lot of relationships these relationships will build to these opportunities and you just never know what can come out of it so uh, invest in yourself if you can just network with as much people as you can get to know who is who in this space and uh, and uh, the rest will follow you you don't really have to have uh, all your eyes dotted and your t's crossed you just have to take that that step that leap forward one step and uh, and and you 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 get you get to what you're going to so uh, I encourage you to do so yeah but it's about taking imperfect action they, you know but the, the key is take the action uh, definitely connect and there's lots of space and lots of opportunities for sure. So again, to our viewers, thank you for tuning in with us and I hope you had great uh, fun listening to James' story and, you know, and use it as inspiration for yourselves. Again, everybody, thank you so much. Have a great day. Wishing thank you guys. great success. All the best. All the best.